In the past, you've always had normal pressure. Mm -hmm. So let's just make sure it stayed that way. I am burnt out. I am emotionally, physically, and financially exhausted. It's no secret that family medicine in Canada is in crisis. More than six million Canadians don't have a family doctor. And here's the thing. Not only are some family physicians closing their practices, but more and more medical students are choosing not to go into the field in the first place. It's as if nobody wants to do the job anymore. Dr. Fanwa Meng has about a thousand patients in Mississauga, Ontario. I think I was born to be a family doctor. There's nothing else I ever wanted to be other than a family doctor. 128 over 78, it's normal. Yeah. That's great. Every day you. you make a difference. All right. People come to you, they're, they're, they're sick, but they're also scared. You're not just relieving their, their pain, you're also relieving their anxiety. Okay? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. But this spring, after 21 years, Dr. Meng is closing her doors. It's so difficult, I can't even begin to explain what it's like to say goodbye to people that you've known for more than 20 years, every 15 minutes. They say, I'm like a family member. They say they were hoping I would be their last doctor. One of the main reasons Dr. Meng is closing and what many family physicians complain of is the paperwork they say is out of control. And I'm on this computer till midnight every night, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. The work never stops. Even if you go on vacation, you're, you're taking your computer with you. So we made the difficult decision to say goodbye to a thousand patients who now I've left orphaned because I cannot physically, mentally, or financially sustain my practice. It is estimated that family doctors are spending 19 hours a week on administrative work. 19 hours. So if you break that down, that's almost two full working days. The family medicine crisis so is, is the reason Queen's University and Lake Ridge Health have started a brand new training program. They're trying to solve the family doctor so shortage. And we got access to their first ever class. So, Assistant uh, Dean Dr. Alan Grill doesn't sugarcoat the situation to the students. Why are people saying that there's a family medicine crisis right now, both in Ontario and in Canada? Just, yeah. People don't have access to primary care providers. Right. So the less providers that we have, the longer people wait for services in the healthcare system that they need, right? And then that can in the middle of this crisis, you might wonder who would want to start the long road to becoming a family doctor? Well, everyone here. These students in their first year of medical school have already committed to family practice. That's one of the unique things about this program. It selects students who want to be family doctors. Meet Hafsa Sheikh. Oh, we hear about burnout all the time. We hear about um, being financial, well, the level of compensation not really matching the inflation at the moment. So there are a lot of concerns that are raised. It can be a little bit scary. Hello. Hello. My name is Hafsa. I'm a first year medical student at Queen's. Um, is it okay if I conduct a physical exam on you today? Hafsa's reason for wanting to be a family doctor goes back to when she was 16 and had just arrived in Canada. The biggest reason for me to pursue family physician, family medicine, was my family physician. It was like a godsend because I never had anyone that I could talk to even. So to meet him and to sort of be vulnerable and talk about those things that were concerning me, I think that was incredibly uh, inspiring. Does it hurt when I push down? When no, it doesn't. Hafsa doesn't just have inspiration on her side. She says she chose this program because it was designed with the current crisis in mind. For example, they address one of the big reasons doctors get burned out today. Money. Meet Dr. Hamilton Jaraj. You know, your practice is your business. So you, got, you have staff to manage, you have uh, rent to manage, you have resources to manage. How do you manage burnout? Obviously, it's a big issue and people talk about it, but it's how you set up your practice that actually helps you uh, avoid that. It surprised me that teaching family medicine, you're talking about how to run the practice, mm -hmm. you're talking about business, you're talking about money. Mm -hmm. Knowing the business side of medicine does prepare them for what's ahead of them. Because they've invested a lot of time and money and energy in becoming doctors. They, we want them to have a full, fulfilling practice that's sustainable, doesn't cause burnout, and they're aware of what are the things they need to look for to have a successful 20, 30 years in practice. So basically just gonna go through the work. Another unique thing about this program is students only learn from family doctors. We're going to room six. And from the beginning, they get to shadow one. Yeah, how's it go? 
Hi. Good. So we have Laura, my medical student. Hi. Laura Vresk is only in her eighth month of medical school. Yeah. Um, I've had the opportunity to be here weekly since September and so have seen some patients again and again. Hi, Coast. We can actually see what we're learning in practice and it really puts it together. Mm -hmm. okay. Dr. Lubma Termizi wants Laura to understand how rewarding it is to be a family doctor. I feel like with Laura, I don't have to say I love this job. Um, I think she sees how much satisfaction I get just from that two-way sort of communication I have with the patients. All right, so we'll get his vaccine ready because I think we're still missing the last vaccine. A vegetable, and I do that. We need to be able to say that this is a career, this is a job that you can love. Yeah. For me, that's really, really important at this stage of what we're going through with the primary care crisis. I did chest change By showing Laura her passion, it's as if Dr. Termizzi is fighting for the very survival of her profession. We can all argue about what are some of the challenges that are facing family doctors, but at the end of the day, this is all about the patient, right? Who's going to look after the patient? With all the challenges facing family doctors today, I wanted to ask Dr. Grill how much of a difference his program can really make. You can prepare students all you want, but if the challenges still exist on the outside, when they leave, how is this a solution? Our main job here as educators is to make sure that when our medical students and residents finish their training and go out to practice, they are ready to hit the ground running on day one. And at the same time, we can advocate for health system changes so that when they're ready to practice, the environment for family medicine is better tomorrow than it is today. These system challenges have to be addressed as we train you guys to be family doctors, right? I'm very optimistic, right? I'm still practicing. I'm going to keep doing it every day, and we'll get there. I'm just going to try and push down and resist me, okay? It's impossible to know what the state of family medicine will be when Hofstra finally graduates. Perfect. But I wonder if the current crisis is giving her second thoughts. And then next thing I'm going to do is... You're finishing your first year. You're still convinced you want to be a family doctor? Yes, of course. There is nothing else I'd rather do. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. There is so much satisfaction you get from pursuing family medicine, at least for me, at a personal level that I don't think I would change my mind. Absolutely not.